And so we move from this sacred and deep place, this beautiful place that Rochelle just took us, a spiritual, prayerful, emotional state. And we move from here into our time of meditation. We take in a gentle breath and just release and let go. I begin to relax and feel that presence of God wash over us, blessing us from head to toe. Again, we breathe in and out, opening up to spirit in a deeper way. So just allow your body to relax and feel that sense of relaxation flow throughout your being. Feel any tension release now. And we begin to tune in to the love, to the wisdom of God. And we allow ourselves to feel, deeply feel the presence of God within our very own hearts. We are immersed in God's presence. And so we feel that, that calm sense, that wellspring of life that is truly always available to us. And we focus on that peace now. Know that you are one with God. I am one with God. I am one with God. Sit with this truth. Sit with this truth. I am one with God. And we rest in this truth, in the silence in the silence. We have allowed ourselves to be touched by the presence of God in this quiet time. And we are grateful for this time communing with spirit. We begin to bring our awareness back to the rest of our service today. We know that spirit provides all that we need. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Well, I'm so grateful to be here, and I want to say Happy New Year. I haven't seen you since, l thank you, I haven't seen you since last year. So how is your new year going so far? Good, some good nods, that is super. Well, how many of you set New Year's resolutions? Not many. Any intentions, goals, dreams? All right, that's more the unity way. <laughs> so how's that going for you? Nods? Uh, okay. Well, my talk title today is It's Time to Flourish. And so we're going to talk about setting forth our intentions and maybe learn a little bit more about resolutions. So at the start of the new year, some people plan to exercise a little bit more or eat, eat fewer sweets or maybe to stay away from the television or to read more books. And usually by the third weekend, mm, they have different plans. <laughs> and that's okay. So we're going to tune into what spirit would have for us 
this during this time and in our lives and and see if we can set forth some intentions and and just allow those to come into fruition well if you did set new year's resolutions then you are taking part in a tradition that actually stretches back thousands of years i didn't know that but the ancient people practiced the fine art of new year's resolutions uh, in the babylonian culture um, their oaths were not internally focused, but were more externally focused as they celebrated the New Year, which was actually held in the spring when they were gathering some of their, their crops. So 4,000 years ago, the ancient, ba ancient Babylonians were celebrating, um, and they had this festival called Akitu, a 12-day festival. And an important part of Akitu was the crowning of a new king where they reaffirmed their faith to the old king or they were crowning the new king and just honoring that and, and making forth their um, commitment. And special rituals also were held. And the Roman culture did something very similar. It was very interesting. I looked this up so I could share it with you today. Um, the Babylonians actually believed that their continued worship was what um, made their whole civilization hum. And we know that it's really truly an inner alignment with God. It's not an outer oath, but an inner commitment, an inner alignment. So back then, citizens would spend the first part of the day attending these uh, ceremonies, making their oaths and their commitments. And then in the second part of the day, they had social activities. And many of the citizens would bring sweet fruits like pears and gifts of honey and other presents to bring in a sweet new year. So would you like a sweet new year? Did you, anybody bring anything sweet for after the service today? <laughs> well, we'll give each other other types of sweet gifts. How's that? To bring in this sweet new year. We're going to set forth a very strong intention. And even when a few weeks go by and we forget our intention, we're going to remind one another of what is important and what we are here to do. So while there doesn't appear to be a direct link from ancient traditions to the modern New Year's resolutions, the desire to begin again, to start anew, shows, a lot, uh, shows up a lot in our Western culture. In 1740, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist tradition, invented a new type of church service called Covenant Renewal Services, or Watch Night Services. You may have heard of these. They were held during the Christmas and the New Year's season to, um, as an alternative to holiday partying. So today these services are actually held on New Year's Eve and I had read about them a little bit on Facebook, which is the source of everything these days. <laughs> but these watch night services were times where the worshipers would sing and pray and reflect on the past year and, and ponder the new year and set forth a new covenant with God. Now doesn't that sound a lot like our burning bowl service and our white stone ceremony? Similar, similar to that. So we get to anchor in that wonderful new feeling at the beginning of the year. And truly, we can do it any time of the year or in any moment, setting forth a new intention, allowing our minds to be renewed. But there's something about the new year. There's something about that new beginning that feels like a clean slate. You have to begin writing a new number on your checks. It's 2016, <laughs> no longer 2015. And whatever wasn't working for, for you, you have an opportunity to set forth a new intention and to begin again with greater clarity. So it's a wonderful time to, um, to feel renewed, like a new beginning. So no matter what type of resolutions that you set for yourself, what really matters is does it work? Perhaps you came to the burning bowl service, the white stone ceremony. Perhaps you did release and let go of your past or what wasn't serving you and took on something new, took on something that really helped to anchor in a vision. I believe that the universe responds to us more favorably when we are in an open and receptive frame of mind, not when we are in that mode where we are shooting on ourselves, where we say, I have to. And a lot of the old way of doing resolutions was just that. If you can think back, to perhaps a time before you came into unity or learned the positive, affirmative unity way, maybe you did set goals and shoulds and have tos in your life. And did it work? Not always, and not necessarily was it so pleasant or uplifting. But we can draw from spirit uh, a word 
that would support us this year, or a phrase, or a song, or a dream that will allow us to flourish and will actually allow our dreams to unfold in easier ways. In the fall, I actually got my word for 2016. You see, we ministers operate a week or two or sometimes a month or two ahead. So we're writing our Christmas talks a couple weeks ahead, and that means we also get our word of the year <laughs> beforehand, which is helpful. <laughs> that way when we go to lead the service about um, drawing on that name, that word, we're prepared and we can share a story about it. We're, we're really grateful to Spirit for that. So back in October, November, the word that came to me is the word flourish. And I just love that word. So when we ask, spirit gives. You know, knock and the door is answered. Seek and ye shall find. Ask and it is given. So I asked for my word or theme for the year and the word flourish came. And it's one of those compound words because flourish for me contains the quality of trust. And it also contains a little bit of surrender. It also contains this idea, this concept of abundance and joy. So we can have compound words. You can have more than one or a whole sentence. Whatever helps you to feel more open and receptive to that light and that love and that power that lives in you, expressing through you in a greater way. So I'm not sure if you have set forth your intention for this year, or maybe you have and already feel like you fell off the bandwagon. We're human. It happens. So today, the service is about getting back on track from wherever we are, or setting forth a word or a tone or the energy in an area of our life where perhaps we've not been shining the light. We've not been paying much attention. We know in unity that our thoughts are mighty powerful. You may have even heard the phrase, thoughts are things. And thoughts in, held in mind produce after their kind. It is so awesome. I remember it's been almost three years ago when my poor little Honda um, stopped functioning well. I only had like two gears. Even, well, it really had four, but only two operated. Things just weren't going well. And when I finally got tired of it, I held the vision of a new Honda, because that's what I do. I like Hondas. <laughs> and sure enough, it manifested. As soon as I was ready, as soon as I was ready and ripe for it, it manifested. And then starting last summer, I revisited an old dream. I always wanted to be a daily word writer. I would sing in my head, daily word writer, daily word writer, writing daily words. <laughs> you might know that song. <laughs> paperback writer. <laughs> so I submitted my Daily Word message and it was accepted. And so I've been writing for the Daily Word since last summer and this issue is the issue where my first five Daily Word messages are published. Well then I had another thought because we tend to do that in Unity. We have these more expansive ideas that tend to to draw us in. You know the word heaven means expansion. So as we evolve spiritually, as we grow personally, our dreams are going to get bigger. Have you noticed that? Yes, they call us forward. They call us deeper. And they call us to be um, a more a broad and deeper expression of who we are. So then I thought, I want one of my articles to be published in the Daily Word magazine because for each month there is an article. So you may be inspired by other people, an author or a musician or somebody who's walking their talk in a way that just lights your heart up, it turns you on. So I decided to write an article. And as usual, after I agree to do something, then I say, oh, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> what have I agreed to do? And so I get to work through the fears and get to work through the writer's block. And I wrote my article, it's called, Here I Grow Again. Here I grow again. And was that also a growth opportunity? Certainly. And so at first they asked me to write it, and I did. And then when I turned it in, they emailed me back and said, we'll let you know if it's accepted. I said, what? You let me know? I didn't say this out loud. I kept it to myself. You mean it's not automatically accepted? <laughs> so I, I prayed on that and got to work through any limiting thoughts and fears that were holding me back about being rejected. 
And then I heard back, and she says, I was out last week. Sorry, I didn't get back with you sooner. <laughs> ha, psych. <laughs> Gave you a growth opportunity, didn't it? Your article's been accepted. And so I'm really excited about that being published in the July issue of Daily Word. So no matter what our dreams are, we often go through the same process, that similar process of we feel more expansive when we think about doing it, how it would be, and then we're asked to do it. And we step up, but sometimes we're just kind of like have one foot in the old world and one foot in the new. Can I do it? And then we feel firmly planted in the new experience of who we are, the new version of who we are. Now, for those of you who have iPhones and work a lot on your computer, you've probably noticed that same type of thing when you go to upgrade your software. You're not sure about it, and then you decide, well, I better. I'm kind of getting excited about this. You upgrade the software, and then you have to deal with the new. And that is the same with us. We have to, we have to kind of get used to the new version. So we're getting used to the new version of us, and we begin putting one foot in front of the other or one song after another, and then sure enough, we're called even higher. Will you come sing at another church? When is your CD coming out? That type of thing. So each one of us goes through this process as we grow. And when we pick a wonderful word for the year, drawing upon a quality of God, that helps us. It helps to actually pull out of us that next version that wants to express so that we can live in that new dream. Live in that new dream. So using this word flourish has enabled me to look at my life in a new way, a more expansive way. And I let myself feel the discomfort. I acknowledge it. Sometimes I pause and then I keep putting one foot in front of the other. But I find myself coming back to the word over and over again. Maybe you have a favorite daily word message that does that for you, or a song that you can play on repeat over and over again so that you feel that power. And it is the power of God. It is the power of God that is calling us higher, helping us to be all that we can be helping us to show up as who we have come here on the planet to be, and then guiding us to do what is ours to do. So selecting a word can help us align with the divine. Align with the divine. It can support us in grounding our day-to-day -day selves, the self that we've gotten used to, <laughs> and helping us bring our spiritual identity into our lives so that we live in a more full way. We may or may not run off and go to ministerial school or, or go do something completely different from what we're doing now. We can rest right here in our current lives and flourish. So bloom where you are planted. So we can bring those qualities of God into our life and have a richer experience right where we are. And then from that place, wherever it is that we are guided, it will be a smoother journey. So there is a daily word in the current issue, I didn't write this one, but it is the word clarity, and it really supported me. I love picking words that help me on my journey. And the message shares that gaining clarity is the first step toward achieving our vision. Having a word, a mantra, can support us in recognizing and claiming our good. We know our good because we feel it. We may see someone on television experiencing that life or we overhear a conversation or the way that someone sings a song or handles a situation and we identify with it. We resonate with it. And so I'm here to say that in those moments, that is God like, tapping us on the shoulder and saying, you, you can do this too. You can experience life in this way. Just try it on. Try it on like a new coat. Most of the time you buy a coat, you try it on, right? So it's not likely that you're going to walk out of the store with a new coat or a new outfit without trying it on. And the same with these spiritual qualities. They're always available to us. They're in our cosmic closet. And when we check out that closet and try it on and see how it feels to have that new approach, maybe it's curiosity for you. Maybe it's a sense of curiosity that you want to adopt this year. Spirit will guide you in choosing that word that will support you in getting from where you are to that next right and perfect place 
in your life. And that may be a change within or it may be something outside. But having a word can help us remember who we are on a very deep level. Another daily word message inspired me to share this affirmation with you. I express the divine qualities of my sacred identity. I express the divine qualities of my sacred identity. Let's say this together. I express the divine qualities of my sacred identity. Truly, God is at the heart of our being. We know this. We read about it. We have experienced it. Perhaps we've had glimpses of those days that just seem to flow where we bump into people who have the right and perfect message or we open the book that has just what we were looking for in it. That is what life can be like when we open to the divine and allow our lives to flourish. And I found a wonderful uh, passage that I want to share with you from Hindu philosopher Patanjali who said this, Dormant forces, faculties, and talents come alive, and you discover yourself to be a great person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. So this is just a part of that natural spiritual evolution, is for us to discover who we are and what is ours to do. I believe that Martin Luther King did just this, and we just celebrated Martin Luther King Day a few, a few days back. He put forth a large vision and reminded us to dream big, not only for our own lives, but for the world. So when we allow ourselves to be inspired by one another, inspired by heroes, inspired by the everyday person as well, we can follow in that same path of inspiration. Of course, it'll be coming through us. We'll be flourishing in our own unique way. You are unique and special, just like everyone else. Yes, so we are each individual expressions of God. And the words are so powerful. They have an energy behind them. You may have those words that are buzzwords for you that make you feel a little uncomfortable. And then you have those great words that when someone makes a request of you, you want to say, yes, yes, I'm on board with that. I'm here to support you. And when we can begin to talk to ourselves in those more positive ways, using those great words um, that are inclusive and loving, empowering, supportive, and compassionate, then we too are likely to step up and take inspired action, moving forward to do what is ours to do. Last Sunday, my church service that I was going to lead in Jefferson City was canceled because of the snow. But the good news is I got to attend Unity Village Chapel and hear my friend Jackie Lenati um, lead the Martin Luther King service. And she shared a great quote that supports this message. She said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. This is, these are things in the world. This is a commitment to nonviolence and peace and clear communication. It's also those things in our personal lives, our passions, our dreams, our hobbies, those things that are important to us. Maybe something that we were really excited about as a child, or maybe it was something we were really excited about at the beginning of the year, and we've already let it go. Let's tap back into that. Let's tune back into God and see what we are guided to do regarding our dream, our vision. The Gandhi King season for nonviolence will be kicking off in just a few weeks at the end of this month. And it is a time of healing and compassion and clear communication. This time is set aside as an educational and media and grassroots awareness campaign that honors the memorial of the deaths of Martin Luther King and Mahatma Gandhi. This is a time focused on peace, and with a growing awareness of peace, don't we have a wonderful foundation from which to build a healthy dream in our lives and for our community? So maybe your dream is to carry out your church's vision or to maybe it's to grow the fellowship area, which is delightful every time I come, by the way. Or maybe it's to step into leadership in your, in your church or to to band together and to sing a song 
to teach a class, to do something sacred, something special. So when we are stepping into something new, there's always something that we need to let go of to prepare us for that good, that ever-expanding good that is unfolding. So it is helpful, even necessary, to let go of limiting concepts. And those limiting concepts can often be boiled down to, I am not enough, and there is not enough. I am not enough, there is not enough. So as you move forward to live out your dream, and I'm sure that Martin Luther King was faced with this as well, because that's what his dream was all about, overcoming. I am not enough, and there is not enough. So those things are likely to pop up. They may. And when they do, we've got the most wonderful tools in unity to remember who we are as children of God and to deny the power of those negative myths, messages, and beliefs that we picked up as children, to deny the power of those limiting thoughts to stop us from stepping forward. How many of you have, have had a dream, have had a goal, and put one foot forward and then backed off of it? or set it aside, or put it in the bun warmer. Maybe your dream is in the bun warmer. Pull it out this year. Allow yourself to, to flourish. And don't beat yourself up about how long it's taken, about your resources, about anything. If adding more pressure or fear to your life worked and helped you create your dream, it would have by now. So let go of the fear, the false evidence appearing real and hold to that vision and draw your community together. Draw those, those people that support you and these wonderful teachings, teachings to help you evolve, to transform, to go higher and higher. Just let your heart guide the way. And we do this by grounding ourselves in our spiritual identity, by taking time for sacred listening, and then taking inspired action. And I'm going to close on this thought. We, like those who have set forth resolutions in the past, have taken uninspired action in the past. We have put upon ourselves those things we have to do, those things we should do. What if we lived our lives from inspiration, following our heart? So go within now. Consult your heart. Let your heart guide the way. See what wisdom your heart has to offer. What is mine to do? Spirit, what is mine to do? What would you have me know? What is mine to release? What is mine to let go? Guide me on my journey. Show me the way. Help me to flourish. And we give thanks for this wisdom that comes forth. And we remember to turn back to God throughout our week. And after aligning with the divine and tuning into your inner wisdom, be ready to take inspired action. Whatever feels like the next right step. What feels like a yes for you. What helps you feel like you are in the flow. Move forward with what you hear, even if you only take baby steps. Inspired action is prompted by the breath of God. And when we take inspired action, instead of trying to make things happen, we allow life and it flows. We connect and resources become available. This is how our good comes into manifestation. Again, I'm going to share the affirmation of the week and add a second part to it. I express the divine qualities of my sacred identity Let's say that together. I express the divine qualities of my sacred identity. And the second part now, my deepest dreams are unfolding now. My deepest dreams are unfolding now. You've got this. Remember that with God, all things are possible. Don't hold back. You are poised and ready. It's time to flourish. God bless you and namaste.